Chapter 12 begins us with rotational motion, and we have to now step back and recognize that there are different types of motion, and up till now we've only been talking about one type. One type of motion is translational motion. So in this case, the whole object is moving together. And in this case, we use the particle mo model. We just didn't need to worry about the shape. The whole object moved together. This could have been a person. This could have been a block or a ball or a cart or a car. But this is what we've been doing up till now. Now the new type of motion is rotational motion, where the object rotates around a fixed point. In this picture, it's in the center. And the idea is that now every single point on the object is moving in a circle, a slightly different circle, but everything's moving in a circle. Now these are the two primary types of motion. It's possible to combine them together. Combinational motion is really common. This is what we have for many objects around us in real world situations. And a good example is an object tossed through the air. In this case, it's this bar, but you could also imagine it, for instance, being a hammer is another, another good example. That as it goes through the air, the center of mass is following the parabolic trajectory that we learned about in two-dimensional kinematics. But then there's also rotation happening around the center of mass. So combination motion is the superposition, the sum of rotational motion and translational motion. So translational motion is something we've already studied. We are now going to study rotational motion. After a little bit, we're going to be combining them together, but right now we're going to focus purely on rotational motion. In order to think about rotational motion, we have a new model. And again, when we thought about translational motion up till now, we always used the particle model. Now we're going to have a new model called the rigid body motion the model. And the rigid body model says that we have an object. Rigid in this case means that the size and shape don't change, but we actually do care about the size and shape. So the idea being that it is fixed, it is one object, one size, one shape. It can be rotated, it can be moved, but it can't actually be deformed, stretched, or compressed. So when we say rigid body model, what's important here is that we care about the size and shape of the object opposed to the particle model. So to give a, a clear distinction between the two, the particle model, we didn't have any shape. It was just a particle, which literally means a sizeless dot. Now the rigid body model, we have some sort of shape and some sort of size that we need to take into account into our calculation. The particle model, all of our mass is located at that point, at that particle. And now the mass has a distribution over the size and shape. I is written here because I is going to be the symbol that we use for moment of inertia. So we actually have to calculate a new quantity, and there'll be some videos on that, called moment of inertia, which takes into account the distribution of the mass. For the particle model, we only had translational motion. And the reason for this is that if you have a point particle, you can't really make it rotate in place. You can make the particle go in a circle, but you can't make it spin and really see that it's spinning. But now, we have translational and rotational motion. I can take a wheel, and I can have the wheel stay in one location, but rotate in place. So rotational motion is only possible or only meaningful for a rigid body. For the particle model, we dealt with forces. We still have forces for rigid body, but we're also going to have a new quantity called torques. Torques occur when forces act on specific positions on our object, and our object can rotate. So again, torque doesn't have any meaning when you have a particle model. Lastly, we had linear momentum, or what we just called momentum, for our particle model. Now our rigid body can still have linear momentum, but now it also has angular momentum. So basically, we're adding rotational components to our rigid body, and none of these rotational components make any sense if you use the particle model. So briefly, we need to review a lot of our rotational motion variables. And you did meet these in earlier sections when we typically were thinking about a particle moving in a circle. Now we use the same variables, but we're frequently talking about a whole object that is rotating. So let's think about a wheel. And we can talk about one point on the wheel. We know that if my whole wheel is rotating, this point has a t um, 
has a tangential velocity and in this case we're not necessarily assuming that it has a change in omega if this is a constant omega you in fact would have a constant ta uh, tangential velocity in which case your tangential acceleration is zero no matter what you have a radial acceleration which we call the centripetal acceleration if omega your angular speed is changing then your tangential speed is changing then your tangential acceleration is non-zero. So this is how we related the linear components of the motion of this point to some rotational variables. So if we have a constant alpha, where alpha is angular acceleration, we know that we can relate the final angular speed to the initial angular speed plus alpha times delta t. So this should look just like a linear motion equation. So I've now written in the linear kinematics equations, which were true for constant uh, acceleration. And these are in terms of s, where s could be x or y. And you see that the angular accelerations are very analogous to them. And we did go through all of this before, but I'm pointing it out because a lot of the rotational motion that we cover in this chapter, we're going to take an old linear equation and we're going to convert all of the variables into angular ones, and the equation will still be true. So that's one thing to think about. You've already met the rotational equations, and we're going to work with them one more time.